Hello, Calico Jack here. Today we're going to be talking about raising mason bees. Mason bees have become a very important insect over the last few years due to the decline of the regular honeybee. Honeybees uh, are having severe problems due to disease and uh, predators, particularly mites. So uh, those of us who used to rely on honeybees for pollination of our fruit trees uh, now rely on uh, mason bees to help us out. Mason bees are considered solitary bees. They don't make honey. They only live uh, six or seven weeks. And the traditional way of raising mason bees is to use a wooden block like this one. It could be uh, larger than that, but this is kind of a typical 4x4 four four size. And the way you raise them is uh, you drill holes. The holes need to be 5 sixteenths of an inch in diameter. And uh, once the holes are drilled, you place the block under the eaves of a house. Uh, and uh, in the spring, the mason bees uh, start looking for a place to lay their eggs. And this is the perfect spot for them, a, a block with holes in it. And so uh, once the mason bee uh, emerges uh, in the spring, it'll uh, start gathering pollen. And it'll lay uh, an egg in a chamber like this. Sometimes they'll be found on the siding of a house or just a hole in a stump. Uh, anything that's suitable for their nesting. And the female honeybee will lay a little pile of pollen in that hole. And then she'll lay an egg on that. And once she's done with that, she'll lay, uh, make a, a mud wall. That's why they're called mason bees. They make that... Uh, like a masonry wall and to seal off that chamber and then she'll repeat that process lay a, a pile of pollen then she lays an egg on it and then seals that one up and she'll continue on and they could probably each bee probably could uh, lay maybe 30 eggs depending on the availability of pollen and weather and those kind of things uh, the problem has become mason bees also have to deal with a lot of predators and diseases and the, the biggest problem I've been dealing with is mites. Uh, mites that uh, also lay their eggs in these same chambers and what happens is uh, in the spring when the mason bee cocoon uh, is ready to emerge it will chew itself out of that cocoon and then start working its way through this chamber but in that process, the mites attach themselves to the mason bees. Sometimes a hundred or more mites will be on one mason bee. And so when it does emerge, it's completely covered with mites. And sometimes they can't even fly. They'll just fall to the ground and spiders or other insects will get it. So that's become a, a problem. And so I've tried a new method to try to avoid that problem. And this method is created by Randy Person and Dave Pelling. And the difference in this method is that you use parchment paper to make paper tubes to insert into these chambers. Now you can purchase uh, systems that are really easy to use and very effective that use cardboard tubes with paper inserts they work fantastic but this is a way to uh, do it yourself just using parchment paper and I'll show you how to make these uh, liners uh, later right now uh, we're going to demonstrate uh, how well this process worked it's the end of January now I probably should have uh, remove these a few months ago, but they should be fine. They've been stored in a, a cool, dry place. So that's going to be the uh, next step in this process is removing the uh, mason bee tubes. Now I've removed the back of the block. This had been sealed up to keep out uh, moisture and predators such as spiders. And you can see each paper liner was about three quarter of an inch longer than the length of the uh, block. And that way you have something to pull on when you're ready 
to remove the uh, liners. So this block is about six inches uh, wide, so it should have four or five mason bee cocoons with each liner. Sometimes they're kind of hard to pull out. Okay, so let's see how well the paper liners worked. Lots of healthy looking cocoons. You see this is the mud that formed the walls between each chamber. And each of these are cocoons. There's no sign of uh, mites in this one. So I'm sure we'll find some mites, but we'll be able just to brush those mites off. So this is a cocoon. So five cocoons in that one tube. So I've removed several of the liners and most of the uh, cocoons look very healthy. Uh, there's usually five to six nice looking cocoons in each one. So I'll be cleaning these off and uh, once they're cleaned off I'll place them in a container and store them in the uh, vegetable bin of a refrigerator until uh, I need them. So later this spring when the trees start to blossom, hopefully the weather's warm enough so that the uh, bees uh, can survive. Uh, they'll be uh, warmed up and then the uh, bees that are inside these cocoons will chew their way out of these cocoons and brush themselves off and begin flying in a few minutes. Now I did find some mites, mites uh, that kind of a yellowish orange mass. So I'll be able to separate these cocoons away from those mites and uh, so that should really help uh, my survival rate with these mason bees. Now you can imagine if uh, these were still in just the wooden blocks without the liners as the uh, mason bees emerged from the, uh, I'll try to focus. Hello again, Calico Jack here again. Uh, as I conclude this video on improving uh, mason bee raising, I want to stress that I'm not an expert, just a hobbyist. Uh, this method is a system that I learned uh, from the uh, report by Randy Pearson. It's on the Stohomish County Washington State University Extension Service website. It's titled Homemade Mason Bee Paper Liners That Work and they sure do work. I also would uh, recommend this book on the Orchard, uh, Orchard Mason Bee written by Brian L. Griffith and recently uh, published a book on uh, the honeybee and uh, what has caused the problems and also some uh, recommendations that hopefully will improve the situation with our honeybees. Fruitless Fall by Rowan Jacobson. Uh, it may seem like a, a lot of work cutting out all these uh, parchment papers, but when you see the results, it's worth it. Some nice, clean uh, mason bee cocoons. Now, each of these cocoons has a hibernating mason bee in it and as soon as it warms up for a few days above 55 degrees or so that mason bee is going to crawl out of there and start flying. Uh, and then I always uh, keep this uh, pile of mites here as I do this just to remind me that it is worth the effort to make these liners or if you'd like purchasing liners but it definitely helps solve that problem. Okay so uh, as an example this is an old wooden block that I used to use without liners and you can see there's a, a few uh, mason bee chambers that have been uh, filled from last year. I'm going to go ahead and uh, reuse this block using paper liners this block is uh, five and a quarter inch long, so I'm going to cut each liner about six inches. 
Uh, this parchment paper is, is white. What I used last year was brown. This should uh, work equally as well. All the texture does seem a little bit different. I, I might go back to that brown parchment paper. Okay, so I'm going to cut the sheet of this parchment paper six inches long. And this just happens to be the way I do it. I'm sure there's better ways of doing it, but this this seems to work. Uh, okay, I'm going to cut them three inches wide. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. And you want it pretty even. I, I found when I didn't do a very good job of cutting these liners, they were uneven and they uh, didn't uh, go into the chambers very well and they would curl up and that's usually when I'd find some problems, either moisture problems or mite problems. So try to get them fairly even. Okay, so all right. And there's different ways of doing this. You can use a steel rod. I found like a, a uh, long screwdriver will work. And after you do this a few times, you'll get the knack of rolling up the parchment paper. And you just kind of crease the paper, turn it, hold it kind of tight as you turn. And you just start turning it. And it just, once it starts rolling, you just roll it right up. And you might want to experiment with uh, different widths. This may be too wide, but uh, if you go to the website I uh, talked about, that will give you a better idea of exactly how long it should go, okay? So now I'm going to just insert a tube into a empty chamber, and as you turn the screwdriver, that helps you. Once it's in, I kind of give it a counterclockwise spin to open that up. So the chamber's in there. It's extending about a half inch or three quarter or so. So we're just going to bend that down. And so uh, we repeat this until the block is full. And then we put a board on the back of that to seal it up. Seal it up with some caulking. And you'd be ready to go for this year's pollination.